Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Moore. I'm here with Jane Migdahl and Kate Moynihan. And today we're joined by MJ Rosenthal, professional organizer and organizational coach, owner of An Organized Life based in Newton. So welcome, MJ. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? What is your business? So what I do is I help clients create balance between their space, their belongings, and their time. And my clients range from somebody who needs to create um, an organized space because they have a new baby joining or a member of the family who's coming to live with them to they need to get ready to stage their home to someone who just wasn't really comfortable with their organizing skill set or their executive function and they're not sure how to lay out their kitchen or the best way for their kids playroom to be set up. Those are the type of clients I help figure out what to do with their things, how to engage with them, and what it looks like when they finish. Um, so MJ, given what you've just told us, how are you able to do your job and help your clients during the time of COVID-19? Wow, that's, that's a great question. And I think a lot of my clients were asking that before COVID hit. Because I do coaching with clients, about 40% of my business is Zoom-based and virtual to begin with, helping clients figure out where they're stuck and together we unravel that stuckness and talk about how to get them to the next step. Virtual organizing is no different for that. And it's really best used by clients who have the motivation to make the shift, who have a manageable project, um, for example, this model doesn't work as well if we have to have a group of 10 people clear out an attic or a basement. It's really better suited for a more specific targeted project with a client who's really willing to roll up their sleeves and saying, where am I stuck? And to look at that together. And in a virtual session, we work in an hour long context. We look at what's wrong. We go through these um, steps of organizing the space process, sorting things out, figuring out what's gonna stay and what's not gonna stay, where we're gonna locate it and how we use it. And then at the end of the session, the client gets to see the photo of before and their photo of after. And that specific project, you can see that full transition from beginning to end in a virtual format. That's a nice so, reward to see. The I know, I was gonna say that's gotta be very satisfying. <laughs> You know, the picture piece of it is really a big piece of it. The clients love that. It's the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae. Wow, look at what I've done in that time. And because we can be very focused and we can do this in an hour, it's really fitting well into people's COVID schedules with everything else that they need to do with their families. They don't have to worry about taking a three or four hour chunk to work together just to get organized we can be targeted and get that done in an hour session, which works really well for people's schedule with how busy we are these days. Are there any um, organizations that are currently taking donations if people are trying to actually clear their things out of the house? It's a great question. Um, most of the boxes that you'll find, the children's sources and um, the, um, other ones that are out behind gas stations and malls, those are still receiving donations and being cleared out. So I'm recommending to clients, if they're doing this on their own and they have small bags of household donations, find your local mall or your local um, gas station, look for those boxes which are located behind them and do a quick drop off. Sanitize afterwards after you yeah. get your <laughs> For larger items or larger drop-offs, the veterans are doing pickups. Oh. So calling and doing a schedule with the veterans, I found has been a good resource. I also find that buy nothing sites are a great resource for people. Let's say you have an old kid's swing set or some kid's toys that you're no longer using, you cleared out your basement, go ahead, put them on the sidewalk pop them on, buy nothing for your local community, or put them up on the corner with a sign that says free, things are still going. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, 
Go ahead, oh, go ahead Nancy. Go Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just going <laughs> to say, <laughs> I know so many questions. Um, just for clients who are thinking of putting their houses on the market, our clients, what are your top recommendations of things they should be doing? So my first recommendation is let's stand at the top of the mountain and get a big picture of what we need to do. And that's what I'm doing with a lot of clients these days. We're doing a virtual consult where we walk through the entire space. We make a punch list of what we could do in that space. We give an A and a B list. So here's what you have to do and here's what would be nice to do because we always make a bigger list than we can get through. So I really like them to be able to focus on what's mission critical to get done and then all the stuff they would like to get done. And at the end of that, you're left with a list of what needs to happen in each space so you can begin assigning that to your time and figuring out how you're going to make this work between now and when you want to put the house on the market. I also encourage inviting the family members who live there to help you with the project having them make decisions. A lot of times what we get stuck with is, oh, well, I don't want to make that decision for my husband or that belongs to my teenagers. Sure. When we're putting a home on the market, we really need to be a little bit more purposeful in our decisions. So getting our family members involved as we go through this is my second big one. Don't take it on yourself. Get the other members involved to participate in the work. Wonderful. Good. Jane, did you have another question or no? I mine are all been mine have all been answered. <laughs> Anything that we've missed, MJ, that you wanted to tell us about? Well, I'm curious. Where do you find that your clients get the most stuck when they're looking at getting started with staging their house for sale? Oh, first clutter. Thing. Go ahead, Kate. <laughs> I just say clutter. I mean, that's the first clutter. thing that came yeah. to my mind. Yeah. And I think it's sentimental attachment to an awful lot of little things. I yeah. feel the same way, but it's the sentimental little things that really you have no need for, right. but they belong to grandma or great grandma. And so how can you throw them away? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's and that's a hard one to make a case for. We can't talk about frequency of use. We right. can't talk about purposefulness. But they are something that tug at our heartstrings, which brings us back to that joy aspect. And my recommendation for things like that is if it is that valuable, if it is that personal, if it means that much, then we should be containing it in a way that is that respectful. So grandma's memories should be put in a weather tight bin and labeled as such. Photographs should be displayed on the shelves in appropriate ways. And if we need to really clear it out because there's too much, let's get a temporary storage unit. Put these away so when we go to move to our new space, we already have the things that are most sentimental and most critical tucked away so we can relocate them to our new space once we've gone through the sale of that's, the home. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah. MJ, thank you so much. So informative as always. And we're going to be adding your contact information when we post this so people can contact you directly. Um, thank you for joining us. What thank you. you. Be safe, be well, and stay organized. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Take care.